you can see my screen and hear me right So we're going to talk about how you can pre-process. Uh, for this tutorial, we're going to focus on Amharic language because I know this language. But let me just first ask how many of you know how, how to talk uh, Sohali language? Um, could you just raise your hand or on the chat? I think most of you here are Ethiopian, so you are Amharic speakers, but is there anyone who is Sohadi or the other language? Grace, you can speak Sohadi. Hilary, Kachila, we have three people who talk Sohadi. Yeah, we'll see, right? Okay, we have four people. Uh, what was the other language on the documentation? Is there anyone who can speak that one? I think say Yoruba or something. Absalam, you can speak the other, the third language. Uh, you, you can speak Shila, that language. Okay, Abdusalam is the only one who can speak that one. Okay, so uh, um, we're going to see how you do the pre-processing on the Hamaric language. I will try to be descriptive as I can for those who are non-Amharic non speakers. But uh, you can take the, uh, the concept how you can pre-process Amharic language. You can take it for your own, for Suhari and Yoruba. At the end of the day, what's require, what uh, it does require is how uh, well you speak the language. So if you know Suhari, you know the the syntax of the language, the punctuation that are different from English, Amharic, and you will try to normalize those differences so that the model, it will be easier for the model to train, to train on that language. So just take away key points for those of you who are deciding to do with Sohali or Yoruba for your project and try to get the unique syntax those language have and try to do the pre-processing on those language. Unfortunately, I don't know those two languages, so I cannot be helpful, but I'll uh, show you then be descriptive for the Amharic language. Okay, so for the Amharic language, Amharic language has its own unique thing that differentiated from uh, English. Uh, the It has its own letters, it has, uh, it has its own, uh, Gaze letters that are ancient, it's an ancient language in Ethiopia. Sometimes the numbers, Arabic numbers, are one to three, right? They are Gaz numbers that are unique for Ethiopia. Sometimes, on the words of if you gather Amharic data, you're likely to get those kind of different numbers that are different from Arabic way. So, we have to find a way to normalize if something occurs in the Gaz numbering. And if you can see it here, uh, you can see this is uh, Amharic uh, letter for school, uh, but in Amharic we can use this kind of shortening way of writing this the school word with this one. Those two have similar meaning, but how you write them is different. So based on the data that you get, you might uh, as uh, either use this kind of writing, the whole word abbreviation, or you will use this kind of the short abbreviation, the short form of the word. So these kind of unique traits that are existed in the Amharic language, you have to find them. You, if you know the language, you will probably will identify them and try to normalize it and put, so it can be easier for the model uh, to, to train the model, whatever the purpose is that you are pre-processing the data. So we're gonna see some key points how you could pre-process them. So here I write a small Python function and here I, I'm just here. I'm just listing one abbreviation that exists in the Amharic language, but there could be there are a lot. And uh, for Sohali, for Yoruba, there could be this kind of unique tricks the language speakers have. So you have to find a way to normalize those things. So I'm I'm choosing here in this function. If there is if in the word, if there is this kind of abbreviation, convert it to this one. So all my data, some Amharic data in the take, um, on the 
data that I'm passing will have the full work in their text. So here I'm choosing to do that in this pre-processing. So I'm converting if this kind of value is transferred, I'm going to get the full abbreviation of that word. I'm saving that word. This is one pre-processing that we can do, cleaning that we can do for the Amharic language. That the other would be there are inter this is this all this you see here are Amharic letters. And these letters can be used interchangeably. So for example, if you can see here, let me just zoom. If you can see, for example, these two letters, if you can see them. They are have different structure how they're written, but they have different a similar sound and similar give similar meaning for a word. So in Hamaric language, we use them interchangeably. We use either this one or this one. So not to confuse the model, you can choose to normalize this one. If there are words of Hamaric letters that are written in this, replace them with this one. This is your choice of for whatever purpose you are doing the fine tuning or the modeling, you can choose to normalize those uh, more than two meanings just to uh, these letters have the, they have the same meaning so it's it's not necessary to use both of them it is gonna uh, confuse the model for fine tuning it might not but it, depending on your use cases in the model uh, output uh, you can uh, use different meters to clean uh, to normalize this kind of data in a language so here i'm choosing to convert if they are this word is in Amharic, convert them with this one. I know they have the similar meaning if I use this one. So I'm deciding this is good enough for training the module by changing all the similarities to one for. I'm normalizing it. So here is one thing that we can do in Amharic language. We can change, normalize these letters of Amharic, which have similar meanings to one for. So this is what uh, this function is doing. It's normalizing the letters to one uh, specified letter so uh, i can pass a data here for example here there is an amharic letter sentence so i'm changing this for, for example this you can see this first word first character uh, it has another character which is this one so let me just run the function Up here. So if you see the first one, this character, you can see it. I'm to, uh, the first function that I, I formulated here above, this one. I'm changing the letter, replacing the letter this one, which is number three of this one, this character, to this one. These have both similar sound and meaning in Amharic language, so I'm replacing it this one. So I'm passing my Amharic data. On this function and it converted to the one that I just gave. So I'm trying to normalize by picking out what makes the Amharic language different and normalizing it so I can have a clean, uh, easier data for the model. Uh, what else is there? If there are characters on your this one, you already know how to guys. If there are these unique, uh, not unique, but symbols on the letter, I'm trying to replace them with spaces so I can have only the words for the module. Uh, I'm converting the codes that exist on, I'm just here, I'm just doing some cleaning up that possibly that happens on uh, words. This, they could be some symbols like in English, there's comma, semicolon and stuff like that. And in Amharic, this kind of uh, colons, this kind of uh, symbols you will find these four dots uh, for English, you will end up with a period, right? When you finish in a sentence, but for Amharic, when a sentence is written uh, at the end of the sentence, you will put these four dots. That is Amharic language syntax. So these four dots will be, will indicate the end of a sentence. So you, I'm picking all those things and just removing them. Just I, I can get only the words that I will train the model in. Anyway, at the end of the day, it matters. Uh, your cleaning up matters. What kind of, what is the purpose of your fine tuning? For what purpose are you uh, 
training you more real too. So if you want the symbols, all these car, uh, dots and everything to be included so the model can understand them, you can pass it. If only if I want to the fine tuning to happen only on the Amharic words, I can pick those data and remove all the symbols. Okay, just sorry, give me a minute. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna take two minutes. I'm back sorry so i'm choosing here to do that for the amharic language what else can i do unit traits in amharic language there is that would be the other would be again um the guess part that i i just showed you i told you here there's also i need to show you the difference what the guess letters look like they look like this this is arabic letter and this is a guess letter for 100, 100 letters. So 100 is written in guess like this one. So uh, in Amharic text, you're likely to see this kind of characters in your uh, text, in Amharic text. Uh, they usually indicate, there's also a letter in guess. Letters also have a symbol in guess, but mostly uh, in interrate, I, I think you'll get the Amharic letter and the numbers only, the guess numbers. You're not likely to get the guess values. It depends on the data you have. Uh, so this one in combination with Amharic language, you will find these letters in the Amharic language in combination. So either you should ch change, if you're training the model with Amharic language, maybe it's, it might not hurt to let the model know what guess letters indicate. So you can convert all these um, uh, Arabic letters to guess or guess to Arabic letters. So it, it matters on your use cases, but this is one thing that you can do in the Amharic letter, one cleaning up or processing or normalization you can do in the Amharic letter. So in this function, uh, by the way, these all codes are shared on the reference that is on the documentation. There is a GitHub repo for this code. You can access that one. So I'm just showing you by running it here, but uh, it exists there also. So here, this is the Unicode for uh, the, the number of the letters, numbers we have, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, value, right, on numbers. So in Amharic, we, they are indicated with this un, Unicode. So it will, uh, Unicode, this is just an information that you can get on the intermediate. The hundred is represented with the, the data pen 100 indicated by this unicode and that 1000 with this one here i'm passing an arabic number and it will turn it for me to guess number uh, so basically that is what this function is doing and this one uh, will convert decimal numbers to guess representations uh, so uh, if i pass for example the arabic number 12 it will return the guess value the function above and this one if i gave it some decimal number if what uh, decimal number for whatever purpose on your data you can use these functions it will return the amharic version of this value so i'm converting it with guess the value this word said native which is a dot in english uh, so anyway this is what the function is doing you can change the function for whatever purpose you have this but this is one of the things that you can do uh, for the Amharic language. 
And this is uh, uh, there is another functionality you can do in your data processing. That is, uh, when you mod when you train models, uh, you have to tokenize, embed, right? These are the steps that you do before you don't pass the raw data to the model. You have to convert it to embedding vectors, and you pass that embedding vectors to the model, and the model will start training on that data and start understanding those data. So anyway, here in case to see if you want to see on the on the words which words are likely to occur consequently. For example, in Okay, so here in this uh, library, the NLTK library, I'm using the biogram collection finder functionality. What this function library is doing is it will pick from the data that you give it, it will pick the most frequently two words that uh, occurs side by side. For example, let's say uh, in English word, maybe let's see here from here, individual words. These are two words. Right. If I pass this particular uh, English letter to the bi biogram collection, you have to give it a lot of uh, letters, a lot of uh, paragraph sentences to find the most frequent words that exist side by side. So you might pick individual words, two words. For biogram, it picks two words. For there's also another library called Triagram, which uh, picks three words. The likely words, three words that uh, that will happen, that will occur frequently side to side. So it will give you those words from your data collection. So maybe if you want to uh, have that information from your data, you can use this library. So here, if I give it the English word, for example, this one, it will likely pick individual words. It just uh, it's not a model it's a library it, it does a calculation so you have to pass a lot of data and he will do the mathematics behind and pick from the text data yeah, that you give it it depends on that it doesn't have a prior information on english language or any language but it will have an information from uh, from your input from the value that you gave it and from both it will go through over everything and it will throw out possible two words that will exist side by side. So here I did the same logic for the Amharic language. So I didn't pass it a lot of Amharic data. I just pass it a few, uh, a few line of Amharic sentence. And from this, it break down, it removed all this. If you can see here to the colon sign, we call it in Amharic tunat. So uh, in Amharic language, you will see this kind of uh, two dots the colon sign in uh, two separate words in Amharic language so here i'm choosing to remove these dots and create a token and after passing creating a token token is i'm i'm, I'm choosing to create a token by the words so you can create a token by each character but that's not necessary in this functionality i'm choosing i'm creating a token by each word so this particular one word is one token and this one the second token this one the third token so uh, by removing these two colon i created a token like you see here and i pass it to to the collection finder biogram this one Find the tokens and the biogram will do the work and it will push out the possible two words that will exist uh, side by side so i put uh, this directory, which is just this directory, it could be anything. I told it to put in the biogram.txt file to see what are the consecutive uh, words, two words that will exist in this Amharic language. This is just an information you might want to know from your data. So after it doing the functionality, this is this is the output that it gave me. So these values, this Amharic two words it's saying are likely to occur. And you can see the score also. You can uh, get the score of the biogram to see how likely the, the library thinks this 
two words will uh, exist side by side. So I have created his the score for the biogram. So it gives me for this word and this word to exist to occur frequently side by side. It gave them a score of this one, and it, it just gave everything the scale of the score. So considering I'm a Maharic speaker, it makes sense for me that it gave this uh, two words, this score, and this two words, this score. Uh, or it might not be correct also. So you are trained, you are, uh, this is the information that you get by using different libraries. So there might be other libraries that can give you a better score. But again, I didn't give it enough Amharic data here. So uh, it's, uh, it might not be the right accurate answer. But after bypassing it, a lot of text information for both Suhali or Amharic or the Yoruba language, you can get the possible frequent two words that exist, which is other or three words with the diagram module. So these are just one of the things that you can do for uh, pre-processing -pre a language. So this one focus on Amharic, but you can take away the concept behind it. That is, uh, I tried to do a Suhali language, but I couldn't. Uh, this it looks like an English letters, but I know I'm sure there is a lot of things that the Swahili language have that make it unique. Like the Amharic has uh, these abbreviations. I'm sure in the Swahili also exists. So this is not the best example for Swahili language, but for those speakers who are Swahili language speakers, you can go ahead and try to normalize that language unique thing uh, so that it can be clean and ready for fine-tuning with the module. So uh, I just point out here a few key points that exist in Amharic language, trying to pre-process or clean it in different form. Okay. Let's go back to question session. Is that a question? Uh, this is the Sheila. Go ahead. Um, hi, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, um, in the pre-processing that you've done, can you please like um, say like three like three names for the types of pre-processing that you've done to the data? Mm -hmm. Three. The three types of pre-processing that you have done. Because okay. I think I was for just... Amharic language, I did. Uh, the short form expansion. So if there is a short form way of representation on the language, I try to get the full word. So one thing that I did is short form expansion. I convert the short form expansion that exists in the text data to the full abbreviation of the data. One thing, this there is this one. The other thing would be character normalization. So in Amharic language, like I said, one character can be represented by different character structures. So I normalize it by picking one structure for it. So I did character normalization, one thing in the pre-processing. The other thing, this uh, multi-word detection with the biogram collection finder or the diagram collection finder. Uh, I, I try to understand my data by doing what frequent word exi exists frequently side by side to each other or three words. Uh, side by side to each other. So I did the other multi-word detection with this particular tool. Mm. And the other thing that I did is because Amharic, like I said, has these guess letters, I try, I convert, I choose the paper person to do. I just convert the Arabic letter to the guess or Amharic. I think I did four things in this pre-processing for the Amharic text. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last one. That was a little bit... The last time. one? Oh, yeah, the last one is this bit. Tamaskan, could you unmute your mic? Okay, the last one is specific to the Amharic language. There is a Ge'ez letters, uh, letters named Ge'ez. That is ancient language in Ethiopia, and that uh, it will likely, if you are working in Amharic language, you will likely to be uh, come across these letters, the guest letters. 
Okay. So first step, what I did was either I converted the Arabic numbers one, two, three, four that existed in Hamari text to the guest letters, or you can convert the guest letters to the Arabic depending on your use case. Or my functionality, I converted all the Arabic letters to the guest part to this kind of place. So if, if I have a one a number one in the Amharic text that I gather, I choose to convert it to preprocessor to be converted to the guest letter. This is uh, specific to the Amharic language. Hope that's clear, Sheila. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, is there another question first? Jabez, go ahead. Okay, I have a few questions. Uh, the first one is, for this project, you are required to scrap over uh, websites to get uh, these uh, data sets, but I'm thinking they are uh, different data sets other than the websites, like maybe books or um, uh, books in PDFs, or maybe Telegram channel, or uh, because most of the data, Amharic data, we have, we can find it in, the, in these uh, uh, other resources. So can we use that also? And uh, yes. if you can give, yeah. if you can give us also a tip on how to use uh, Telegram. I tried to use API of, uh, of Telegram to access a channel channels, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's not responding. If you have a tip on that, and also maybe uh, what what do you do on the schema for the data for the database? How do you store the data on the, the database? Do you create a table and maybe categorize it under uh, entertainment news or something like that? Or how do we do that? I know that uh, knowing the why we we are doing this meaning the purpose of the fine tuning is. Uh, if we know that, we can decide how to design the schema, but it, I think it's general purpose. So how do we do that? So for the first question, you can find the data anywhere, not just websites. Telegram, uh, I don't think I can show you now, but I think there is an option to get the JSON file from each channel in the Telegram. So you can fetch the data. So for example, here I'm using the Telegram channel. Tikva. I think the, you, the Amharic speakers, you guys will know that channel. So I'm using that for specific large data. But uh, what I'm saying is you can find the data from books anywhere for the Amharic language or others as well for Sohali and Yoruba. You can find the data anywhere. Just you. At the end of the day, what we want is not uh, to have a structured data that is put on the database. So if you can just uh, structure that data wh wherever you get it from to be ready, uh, right, ready for fine tuning, that is what we want. So you can be. Uh, there's no you, limitation on that. You can find the data anywhere. For the second question, Jabez. Um, you are asking how you can store the data, right? Yes, how, how do we design the schema for the data? Yeah, there is no, yeah, there is no specific use case that is given this time. So all you have to do is from the data, you can find different possible uh, use cases, right? From the data, the data can be used for different purposes we, because we didn't give you anything, so try to it could be a lot, at least pick some few use cases that uh, can be fine-tuned for a model and categorize those use cases that you see from the data and store it in the database. So, For example, uh, if we want to train the fine-tuned data with Amharic language for generating advertisement in Amharic language, or it can be to tell story from the Amharic language or even just to answer uh, like chat GPT does with English with Amharic language these are different use cases that you can train your model to so you can create a categorization first by looking at the data manually and create a categorization and those categorization will be the name of your tables you can sort the data of the I have this category of Amharic data in my database and this category can be used to fine tune the model for this purpose. So those categories you have, you guys have to uh, decide on. You can have a lot of categories, a lot of database tables that are be 
ready for fine tuning for different purpose. Hope that answers Javis. Okay, uh, speak up, Javis. You can speak up, uh, Javis. Yes, uh, thank you. And for the first one, the Telegram one, yeah, do you automate it if we use the JSON file? Is it is that automatic? Which means that it fetch uh, continuously? I think you should have. You should. You will put edit uh, uh, from this date to this date. You can get the JSON file from the Telegram API. Now, you know what? How uh, it's better if I go back, uh, get back on the Slack on this particular how you can fetch data from Telegram. Uh, for uh, I will share on the Slack, Travis. I think that's that, that's better. Okay. Is there any other question? Sheila, go ahead. Um, just for clarification, you said we're going to have different databases for different um, um, fine tuning purposes or it's different tables. Yes, I mean, you are fetching a lot of data, right? Yes. And those data can have different semantic meaning, different purpose. They can have audio files, they can have an image file and just Think of, think of what are the possible things that we can get from this data, from this data. So what could possibly, if we train the data, the LLM data, what we are expecting, just try to be imaginative and see the see first, you, the data that you have could be anything. It could be from a book, from novels, it could be uh, from Telegram, which contains a lot of adver advertisement, or it could be anything, right? The data that you fetch. So you can create uh, these uh, organ tables that have different purposes. So it will be ready when you do when you decide to do fine tuning at some point. Okay, it's just the data is lot, and it could be a lot. It, the data can have a lot of meanings and it have a lot of purpose. So your table creation can be different uh, and more than one. So just it depends on the data that you fetch. Okay, thank you. Hilary? Yes, uh, yeah, my question is also on the storage. Uh, you have, we are told you can use Mongo or Postgres. So um, uh, I, I know it's maybe better to start to have, let's say the audio files are stored on MongoDB because it's uh, unstructured and in collections. And um, what did what you advise? Do you use both? Uh, or uh, figure out which one is best best for for uh, different cases. You mean uh, which is better um, to use MongoDB or Postgres? Is that your question? That I have a style? Yeah, do you use both? Uh, can you use both? Or, yes. Um, yeah. Okay. If you if you feel like MongoDB narration or database is better for the data type, you can use that. If it's supposed to grow, so you, you can use that. So there is no specified thing on this particular project. So it just shows uh, you are the deciders of what should be there. Okay. Any other question regarding this or the project itself? Is there a team who decided to use Tohali? Swahili, so I think the pronunciation. Hilary, have you guys decided on your team? Not yet. Um, I think most of them are speak Amharic, maybe. Maybe that. Uh, I think I'm the only one who can speak uh, Swahili. 
So, okay. Uh, so I think you get the purpose of what you can do with the language that you pick. That is the purpose of this tutorial. Hope that helps. If you don't have further questions, uh, we can end this tutorial. Can I get a reaction? Okay. So we can have a short tutorial on afternoon. We will see each other then. We'll talk. Can you share? Yes, I, I will share it on the drive, I'll work out.